Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here for MotionTutorials.net with a new tutorial on how to create letter by letter 3D animation in After Effects using Cinema 4D Lite. So if you check out the first half of this and you're new to Cinema 4D Lite and After Effects, we were talking about creating this 3D text using C4D Lite in After Effects. So check out that one real quick if you wanna get up to speed or if you just wanna figure out how to do this cool letter by letter thing you can jump right in. So we're in After Effects. We got some 3D text that we built in Cinema 4D Lite. We need to get that sucker back open in Cinema 4D Lite. And this is already a hiccup in the problem sometimes because how do we get that thing back open if we're in Cinema 4D Lite, not the full version, and we're just working in After Effects? It's kind of buried in there. You go to Edit, Edit Original, or don't even worry about that. Just remember, press Command E, and it'll reopen that. There we go. And there's our project. Now, if you see this window and you've closed it a thousand times, stop closing it because what's important about this little annoying window that you skip past is activating this enables these MoGraph effector and fracture objects. And these are really important to what we're gonna do. So quickly sign up. I know it's annoying, trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Just fill out that form, get it sent to your email, get that activation code. No one wants to do it. It's so much more fun to close that window, but trust me. So go do that quickly. If you haven't already, I'll wait. Okay. So we've done that. So now we have our 3d extrude object. Let's just delete this circle. I don't need that. And let's just take the movement in Z down to this. So they're not going so far back. It's going to get a little weird if we're rotating in and moving them in letter by letter. Now to enable it to let us animate and adjust each letter or chunk separately. If we're working with an extrude object, what we would want to do is go to MoGraph and get this fracture object. And if you didn't do that registration thing, it's going to give you a warning error and not let you do it. So I told you, you got to do that for this to work. And once we have that fracture object in there, we want to drop our extrude object into it. And now it's nested under there. And then on this fracture object under object, we don't want it straight. What we want to do is go to explode segments and connect, which means that basically it's going to take every little part and separate it. So then when we start adding these MoGraph effectors, like plain or random, for example, if we do random, it's going to move them all randomly. If we just had it on explode segments, check this out. If you hit this on accident, this gets kind of crazy. We'll go to random and that's why we want to do connect because it's not connecting the caps and the backs and that's just all a big mess. So make sure your fracture object is on explode segments and connect. But I got this little problem here. It's not bringing in half my textures and I could have just had one line of text, but problems come up and let's talk about how to solve them. So what's going on here is, is taking your extrude object and it's not working correctly, but let me show you a little trick. If we have an extrude object with multiple things in it, like these two text objects, what we can do is go to this make editable button or press C and that's going to take that text and actually make separate copies of extrude objects within it. So the point of that is now these are two separate extrude objects with the same things in it, but we just kind of separated it and save the process of kind of taking things in and out of hierarchies. And long story short, we can take both of those. Let's just put those into that top level of that fracture object. And then I'm just going to move my materials back up here, delete these extra empty group nulls. We don't need those. And we're almost there, but we don't have our materials on the bottom. Well, a quick little shortcut that's cool is if we select all of our materials, hold command and drag it onto another object, it's going to copy them. Maybe it'll bring them in the wrong order. No big deal since this is texturing this sequentially. So we got our base, then we got our edges and caps. We just need to move this dark gray one back to the beginning. And these second ones can be in either order. And there we go. We're back. It looks exactly the same. What the hell was the point of all that confusing nonsense? Well, the point of that is this fracture object enables us to add these MoGraph effectors. So if you're in the full version of Cine 40, there's tons of these. If you're in C40 light, you can get started with plain and random. And the point of these, if we have our fracture object highlighted, we can go to MoGraph effectors and grab either of them. If we grab plane, it's just going to make it look like it's popping up in space. And it gives us this position 
scale and rotation checkboxes. So we check on rotation as an example. We can rotate them all left to right. Look at that, that's pretty cool. And if I delete that, just as a quick example, I'll go to MoGraph Effector Random with that Fracture Object selected. It's gonna randomly change their position. Or if I check on Scale, their Scale. Or if I check on Rotation, their Rotation. And with this one, I could also change the random seed so it's pulling it in with the same information but differently. So quick little tour of effectors, but this is where Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D Lights really shines. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this. So the point of these, if we kind of think about it like type animators and After Effects, is we can have our original position, which we just set when we built our text. Then we can have our B position where we kind of move things and rotate them and adjust them. So maybe they're all kind of offset like this. And then we can animate this strength to move them into place. So let's say we're just doing this random one first. We can click this little empty dot to make a keyframe at 100, go ahead in time on our little timeline, say like 20 frames, and then animate it down to zero. So let's we'll punch in zero. Click this keyframe icon to update that important thing to remember. And then they're gonna animate from position a, which is a strength of 100, down to our original position. And if we go to window timeline, there's our keyframes, and we have just one set of keyframes, and we can also look at this as a motion curve. And Cinema 4D, by default, is going to add in easing. So we can see this is the easing of our motion curve. If we play this, there they're animating in. And just like in After Effects with the graph editor, we can grab this and adjust these. So we could even have it overshoot if we want it to actually go from 100 below zero and then snap back. You could have those same two keyframes and have it do something cool like that. And if we wanted it to take longer, we could drag these out and have it kind of snap and adjust these. Now in this, you saw me panning around. You're probably saying, hey, what are you doing? What the hell are you pressing? Well, if you press the one key and drag the left mouse, it'll pan. Two will scale vertically and horizontally and get it a little wacky, but if we think about pressing plus and minus in After Effects, then we can kind of scale and zoom this in. Now, what's awesome about working with these effectors is we don't just have to use that one. We could get our fracture object selected again. And if we go to effectors, there's that random one that we dropped on. We could go to MoGraph effector plane. And then if I look back at that fracture object, you can see we have both of them there. Now, we can change the order of these or delete them. And say I accidentally didn't have it selected, no worries if I go to MoGraph Effector Plane and say, oops, I didn't have Fracture Object selected, didn't do anything. We can grab it and drag that plane down into Effectors, and then that's gonna set up. So now for this one, I can go to my Plane Effector, and this has similar position, scale, rotation, but it's gonna do it evenly on all letters. So we could do the same sort of thing. Let's kind of set a beginning and end position. We'll kind of rotate them all, let's say to the left, set a keyframe for strength, go to frame 30 and just animate that down to zero. And there we go, we got both of these working together. Look at that cool little text animation. And if we save this and go back into After Effects, it's gonna update. So there we have our cool little animation, if I jump ahead 10 frames at a time to kind of preview it. And like I did in the last one, we could have things like adjustment layers with glows and things to add on top of our Cinema 4D stuff. So if I play this, I'm not even editing this out. Look, that's how quick it's rendering. Pretty cool if we're doing basic stuff. And then I can just adjust my glow and radius intensity or just turn that off and look at that. Now that's just doing it all the same point. We wanted to adjust letter by letter and get closer to what we could do in After Effects with that sort of stuff. Well, what's awesome about these effectors, if we click, if we click either of them, 
there's this fall off. So right now it's just doing that evenly. But if I change this shape from infinite to something else, I really like to use this sphere. If I go to the beginning, I can move this and let's just delete those strength keyframes. So if I go there and press command shift, click, or if you don't want to remember that, you can right click anywhere and go to animation, delete track, and I'll do the same thing, animation, delete track. Now nothing's happening, but instead of animating that strength, I could take this fall off and move it left to right. And to get an idea of what's going on, I can also turn these on and off temporarily. So I'll turn off my random effector. So now I can see that this little sphere is animating those letter by letter, and I could just animate the position or fall off settings, like the scale of this, and then just move it in and out of frame or invert it if I want them to kind of be all rotated and then snap into place. So you could do a lot of cool stuff with letter by letter text animation in Cinema 4D Lite, all in After Effects with the free version to make these cool 3D text animations. And if you wanna dig more into this and talk about really getting into those fall off settings, you can check out the other tutorial I have about doing this in the full version of Cinema 4D, which takes a little bit of a different approach at the beginning, but jumps right into talking about those fall off settings. And if you wanna learn more about working in Cinema 4D Lite and really get off the ground and learn things like materials, lighting, cameras, and get your bearings on the basics of transitioning into real 3D and After Effects. Check out some of those other tutorials I have by clicking any of those thumbnails to keep learning. And if you haven't already, I know I won't shut up about it lately, but be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have all these tutorials on Sigma 4D, C4D Lite, After Effects, Element 3D, where you can find everything on all these tutorials, as well as written notes and screenshots. I'm getting a little more thorough with my tutorials if you like reading and looking at images instead of watching tutorials, which if you're already watching this, I don't know how you'd even be hearing me say that. But check that out. And if you want any of these project files that I'm always talking about, you can get those by going to support the show on motiontutorials.net and throwing in a couple bucks to get any project files that I talk about in the tutorials. Ah, excuse me, in the tutorials. Maybe I should have come up with an easier to say URL. And slash, or you can become a regular supporter of the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella, where you can throw in a couple bucks per tutorial and get access to three project files or even get unlimited project files and get a link to view all the project files that I built up over the years in all of my tutorials. So if you want access to that, be sure to check out those two links. And if you have any questions on any of these tutorials, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella, as well as on Facebook. I'm at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. If you want to talk Cinema 4D, After Effects, or any of this stuff, I love hearing from people watching the tutorials. And be sure to subscribe to the channel on youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. That's basically all the ads I can get for this one because I'm running out of breath talking about how many ads and crap I'm throwing at you. So as always, thanks for watching this one. I hope you learned a lot and I will see you at the next video. If you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often, you can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.